Welcome back. Today, I've got three big stories to share with you, as well as a roundup of the tastiest tidbits. So, phase two of Season of Discovery has kicked off. It's got some huge new lore. Phase one set the tone. Phase two is cooking hard. There's a web of conspiracies being woven throughout Azeroth, and a few of them are way bigger than we expected. Okay. Zalatath has reappeared, foreshadowing a debt to be paid in later phases, or perhaps even with the war within. We've got the tale of a paladin. Isn't this a fun bit of serendipity? You need something, and I just so happen to have exactly what you're looking for. Paladin banished because the Silver Hand couldn't handle the truth, a crime thriller with a dwarf hot on the heels of the Royal Apothecary Society and their new plague, we've got a night elf who hates the Alliance, Dark Riders of Karazhan, and like literally the, the Dark Riders of Karazhan, this is their first canonical appearance in the game, so that's crazy. That's not correct. What the fuck is he talking about? The Dark Riders were in Legion. And we've got a rogue wrapped up in schemes beyond their control. This maybe he means in SOD. Timeline relevant? Right. Okay, I had a. Maybe that's what he meant. That makes more sense. Stuff is massive. It amps the core canon of Warcraft like never before. There's a lot to get through. Phase 2 brings in new best and slot crafted items, and just like Phase 1, that means there's a crazy quest chain connected. This time we're in Nomergon, which is not the natural home for Void lore, but Zalatath has in fact managed to make an appearance. Nomergon is a technological marvel, but to get your Neuralinked Arcano Filament Monocle or your Whirling True Silver Gear Wall, you need to find a way to cleanse the fill. The rotating edges on this shield are surprisingly sharp. This seems just as dangerous for the bearer as it is to the attack. Find a way to cleanse the filth of everything you salvage. Now, the salvage o 9000 can do that, but it itself is filthy. We did so watch the, the sixth end video, though. getting Ziri the wrench little sprocket what she needs to get the thing going. So you find the G7 core processor that's needed, but of course, it's corrupted. This, this thing can pre-render over 4 million gigaflops of low-variance relation code bursts. Wow. <laughs> Kicks off a zany gnomish adventure. G7 Calendor, core you find processor. Four trans G7 core. It's like a core i7 processor. This thing can pre render over 4 million gigaflops. Transponders. Those lead to teleport coordinates to a secret mountaintop base of the processor's inventor, Weirdal Wondergear. Now, this guy clearly experiments with some pretty dangerous stuff. Uh, the processor, as it turns out, is powered with a charged void core. Yes. Now, finding the inert core is the easy part. Ch this object seems to draw in all surrounding light and warmth. It is very cold to the touch dangerous stuff. Uh, the processor, as it turns out, is powered with a charged void core. Yes. Now, finding the inert core is the easy part. Charging it is rather impossible. At least, not without a void patron, but luckily, we've already got one watching over us. So, as we adventure through Fairless and kill more and more, the shadowy void figure who powered up our void gear in phase one shows up, and she tells us, Interesting pillars and stuff here as well. For nothing more than altruism, that she will recharge our void core. She raises a hand and a motive. Want to help you, of course. That void core you carry, it's well and truly spent. But I could help you charge it. Okay, let me just. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna complain. Okay? I'm gonna complain a little bit, okay? Did anyone proofread any of the dialogue that has come from this fucking character in SOD? Is anyone checking this for grammatical errors or anything? Like, it's driving me insane. Almost every fucking dialogue segment that Zalus had in SOD has a fucking typo or some fucked up grammar. Some dumbass shit. What the fuck is this, bro? Fucking proofread your shit. Proofread it. Fucking hire me and I'll do it. The usage of the term flops is actually interesting. It implies that IEEE754 standard for floating point arithmetic is also somehow standard and wow. 
Yeah, that's over my head. <laughs> that's over my head. Darkness appears. We silently agree to take it, but the shadowy figure says one day she hopes we're in a similarly altruistic mood. Nothing, of course. The benefits of altruism are not lost on me, and I very much enjoy cultivating mutually beneficial relationships. Who knows? There may come a time when you're in a position to help me, and may find yourself feeling similarly altruistic. So we're clearly building a mutually beneficial relationship with this character. She calls us smart and then she disappears. The quest chain quickly closes after that with the salvage 9000 being repaired, but of course- She's smooth talking us like she always has. The big news here is the shadowy figure is still following us, and I think there can no longer be any doubt we're talking about Zalatath. I mean, for a full breakdown of why this level 63 high elf in void form is Zalatath, you can check out our previous video. You don't need a video to explain that to you. It's so fucking obvious that it's Zalatath. The fact that people contested it in the first place is mind blowing. But essentially, this is a blind spot in her history. What we previously know is that a Stormwind Bishop after the first war, Natalie Selene, held Zalatath Blade of the Black Empire and used it to study the dark magic of Orc Necrolites. But after that, we have no idea until the Blade shows up in the hands of Twilight Cultists in the Legion expansion, which is where we first learned about it. The other huge clue is this is a high elf in void form, which basically is the closest you can get to a void elf in that version of the game, right? In classic. Yep. And it looks very similar to the war within Zalatath. Now, in a way, that's odd, because surely at this time, she's just a dagger. Well, that's where you can actually think back to the deals that have been done during the Dragonflight expansion with the infinite Dragonflight. So this could, in fact, be her manipulating events through them. Maybe Zalatath in her elf form has found a way to go to the past, and this is something that is playing out through Season of Discovery. And maybe that is why she has such a knowing and playful tone with us. She always does. She always does. That's how it's been the, the entire time. Zalatath has always been that way. Anyway, this brief appearance I think promises more. I cannot wait to see what Season 3 holds, especially because Season 3 and Darkheart, which is Dragonflight's final and seemingly very Zalatath-focused patch, will be at a similar enough time. That could be pretty big, but that's actually not the end of today's stories. Let's move on to story number two. Naru. I mean, oh. she does say... The Naru consider us, I know the Naru consider us horrors to be resisted. We do not share this view. We simply see them as long lost brethren who will return to the true path in time. That's what Zalatath says about Naru. So. We consider them long lost brethren who shall return to the true path in time. SOD as an alternate timeline? No. SOD is not an alternate timeline. SOD is just giving you more, um, SOD does not appear to be an alternate timeline. SOD appears to be giving you more context on characters and things that have existed for a long time. Don't think of it as some alternate universe, some alternate timeline. They didn't fucking say that. Let's just, uh, look at the lore as it's presented and think, ah, maybe this was happening back in classic times and it just wasn't presented to us. Okay, it's time for a mystery with all the markings of a noir crime thriller that tells us the origins of Azeroth's most controversial weapon and even goes a bit further. In this, we find level 77 secret agents. One could be a worgen, the other one might actually be a bronze dragon. It's all pretty crazy, and it starts with this. A humble sleeping bag. It grants a modest XP gain of 3% for 3 hours, but it's not about the XP. Today, it's about the lore drop that's coming with the sleeping bag. Now, oh, this mystery begins with Strongguard, the Syndicate, and the Royal Apothecary Society. Uh -huh. A maverick, possibly known as CB, has led a personal investigation, but they get in too deep. They had to get out quick, and in the process, they left their cozy sleeping bag behind for us to find. Now, at the center of this web is Sylvanas and her schemes, the most important of which being the New Plague. 
Now you begin this in either the Barons or Westfall. For the sake of this, we'll kick it off with Westfall. In Alexton Farm, there's a crime scene, a destroyed cart with bodies burnt beyond recognition. No evidence, but a slip of paper pointing towards the Barons. So we follow that. And near Mulgore, a ginger tabby cat leads to another murder scene. But this time we don't just arrive to the murder scene, we actually see a note left by somebody else. And that note reads like this. Mission said they were making deliveries for New Plague. Looks like simple apothecary accidents to me. So this, obviously, raises a few questions. Who is Mission? What is New Plague? What's going on? What are they on the trail of? What we can piece together, though, is that in each case, we've seen some sort of murder or disaster scene, but they kind of look like cover-ups. They are made to look like apothecary accidents. Okay, we then find another hiding spot in Stone Talon where three bows are arranged in the shape of what could be the initials CB. And that's where we get a quest named Wet Job. Now, a wet job, sort of in the lingo, is a covert assassination performed by a government operative. So, it actually looks like CB was carrying out a hit on Apothecary Society caravans around the world whilst they were delivering new plague. A few mm -hmm. clues like guns being used and food crates actually point towards CB being a dwarf, and the next clue sends us to Loch Modan, where another one of his camps, the Eagle's Fist... Wait a second. Wait a second. Isn't that one of the removed textures found. from Uldamon? That tapestry? Like With guns being used on it? and food crates actually point towards CB being a dwarf, and the next clue sends us to Loch Modan. Is this specific to SOD? Because this this is a data mined, um, this is a data mined uh, texture, but it's not found anywhere in Uldamon. This is new. Wait a second. They pulled a cuneiform tapestry with planets on it and used it in SOD because it is in the file set for original Uldamon. I wonder if this is translatable. I wonder if you could translate this. If it's similar enough to real cuneiform, which is like some of the first scripture ever, the, some of the first language ever on earth. I thought you saw this, not an SOD. No, I don't think so. And I didn't really think about the implication of of it being used. I've seen the tapestry in its file form from, from retail, but I didn't realize that they had put it in a place in SOD where it didn't exist before. I thought those are eggs. Um, they look like planets to me. They look like perfectly spherical. They don't look egg-shaped to me. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Because he's looking at them at, like, an angle. They look like planets to me. Maybe I'm wrong, though. This torn-up version of the tapestry? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, the, the original one isn't torn up? Wait a second. So not only is it a fucking... Not only is it a... What? Not only, they fucking changed it. My, my brain is breaking right now, and it's all torn to shit. What are these? What did they put in OG Uldamon that we didn't fucking pay any attention to? Can you fucking translate this? Isn't that a thing? That's real fucking similar right there. Late Babylonian sun? Shut the fuck up. Holy fucking shit, that'd be crazy if you could actually... Sun ox. Dude, don't do this to me, dude! Don't fucking do this to me, dude. This on- this Anshe thing. There's no- there's no... In the Anshe tier in SOD, too? Dude, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. There's no way, bro. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way. 
There's no way. No, 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 no. I mean, there's a way. When I feel this way about certain theories, sometimes I kind of, I feel like I know. Like with the myths of the realm thing in Final Fantasy, felt like I knew. Felt like I, I had a beat on that shit. I feel like this is one of those times camps the eagle's fist is found on the actual dam this time around there's a note and the note speaks of loyalty to the eagle and fist and we also see a long barreled rifle with a scope pointing towards the arathi highlands now the symbols for Stromgard are the eagle and fist so that's one very clear connection yeah that's what and i would this go leads with leads us to cb's final camp and of course the cozy sleeping bag this is also where the mystery kicks into the next level, and it really does make me interested for phase three. So, as we climb the wall, two secret agents appear, a male and a female, and they watch you from afar. If you get close, they will disappear in a flash of light. What's weird, though, is they're level 77, and one of them tracks as a beast. Now, level 77, that basically is Wrath of the Lich King-like levels, right? It also could be War Within levels post, like, you know, squishes. Show the flash of light! What's going on there? It could- Are you fucking kidding me? You're gonna tell me that they disappear if you stare at them long enough? You didn't fucking get footage of it? God damn it. Sorry, chat. I was, I was really hoping to see that. Suggests that they are just very powerful beings. It could also suggest that there could be an element of time travel here, maybe a bronze agent, something like that. Then of course the new plague is involved. Are infinites or the bronze looking into the new plague? That's of course the new concoction of the plague that Sylvanas has made that uh, is supposed to be able to, to get kill close. You know, the living and the Oh, so dead. maybe he didn't get footage of it. if you wanted to go really he didn't get crazy, close enough. part of the deaths of Gromi takes place in the Western plague lands and CB, could spell chromie bronze, but that also does to me sound completely crackpot. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> yeah, that's, so uh, says, that's, that's completely crackpot. That's, that's a, yeah. I would, yeah. But going underground until the heat is off. And really with that, the trail kind of goes cold for us. We have to assume it will be picked up later. I don't know but how close you need, maybe some only some classes clues, can do it. Right? Uh, two books, Beyond the Dark Portal and The Aftermath of the Second War. These are resting on a table. Now, dragons and dwarves were both, uh, you know, key to many stories post-Second War, but even looking at those characters, I can't put any, you know, I can't put my finger on anyone with the initial CB. So who CB is? That is a mystery. Now, it is currently believed by the community that there does remain- Ah, CB, I get it. It's currently believed. Very smart. You figured it out, didn't even know it. They've been spotted all around the world. That's not the only place you can find these guys either. Platinum WoW, last video shows the flash of those secret agents. Okay. Cairn Bloodhoof. That could be very interesting. Because at this time, Cairn's still alive, right? Or no, pardon, pardon, I cannot remember. Yeah, he's, st he's, and he's a Tauren. So if Tauren have connections with the Arathi and are trying to s stifle the efforts of a new plague being created by the undead, unless I'm tracking this wrong. He dies in Kata, that's what I thought. He died to Garrosh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm aware of that. That's why I was just like, that's why I was, sometimes I'm like, mm, pretty sure I know that to be the case, but you know, it's good to just check and ask. Just, yeah. He's a active. Jay's cooking. Siladin Borm Rage. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fuck you up. And with those secret agents that still could be found. But right now, the trail appears to be cold. Either way, though, this does feel a bit tied to the Forsaken story. So to catch you up on that, the Horde were initially very hesitant. The secret agents in the black that teleport away, bro, that, that makes, I mean, that's not, that makes me really, I mean, that's like as aliens as it gets. You know what I mean? Like, wh what is that? Like, that's some, um, that's some like, dude, that's to let the Forsaken in, given their recent past. Now, the Apothecary Society had been working on a new plague that would kill both the living and the dead, but it was being developed under the guise of it being a cure. Now, fresh Forsaken quests through Terrace Fall 
help various apothecaries actually test early versions of this on the Scarlets. The first time the Alliance got was Finn Odelik's investigation in Goshak Farm. That's where Forsaken couriers were caught with documents proving that there like, is actually a new plague in existence. So yeah. it could tie into that. Basically, right. though, this simple quest chain about a bloody sleeping bag yeah, has actually shown crazy. us that the Royal Apothecary Society is sending agents across the whole world in search of knowledge and ingredients. They're in Westfall. They're in the Barrens. Also, we know that the Kingdom of Stromgard has seemingly known about this from the beginning, has maybe had agents assassinating them where they can, because again, the agent we're following says they are loyal to basically the symbols of Stromgard. We can then also glean that there's likely another faction involved, could be the Syndicate, could be SI7, and uh, yeah, could be a dragon, could be Gilneans, even when you uh, think about those two agents and, and what they could be. It's pretty crazy. I have to imagine this will unfold throughout the season of Discovery, but ultimately, this culminates with the use of that new plague at the Wrathgate. Our next story is really fantastic. So, hmm. in Phase 1, Paladins went on an epic quest chain, slaying Blackrock Orcs, doing jobs for Warlocks, and cracking down on Infernals in Ashenvale. The whole thing centered around cleansing a mysterious orb found in the Tower of Athalax. Through those quests, the Paladin gained a divine storm, but there were still questions. I mean, just what was the Argus Weight cult actually up to, and what was the orb about? Those things remained a mystery until now. In what is revealed as a conspiracy stretching from the Silver Hand to the Scarlet Crusade with Dreadlord fingerprints all over it, and the story begins with a disgraced paladin. In Nigel's point, what? we find an idealistic monk named Anton, who's not yet aware that the Scarlet Crusade has fallen to madness. Now, he asks adventurers to go south and to kill undead ravagers. On the way, we find the infested highborn ruins known as Manorok Coven. And at the heart of those ruins, there are signs of a brutal fight. Two Scarlet Crusaders lie dead with a broken battle hammer at the center. Now, killing demon-worshipping orcs around the ruins, we then find on one of them a communique from their leadership. And when we read that, we discover that due to the coven's ineptitude, two groups of interlopers broke in and they stole something valuable. Now, the first group are the Scarlet Crusaders, who the leader says they will deal with personally. I'll get onto this in a second, but... With this, we're actually likely hearing from a Dreadlord in this note, which is fairly cool. And at the time, what Dreadlords were doing is essentially trying to lead the Legion presence on Azeroth, and they had possessed the Scarlet Crusader leader, Dathrahan. Anyway, the second group that's mentioned, they're not Scarlets. They're a pair of Paladins, one of whom wielded a Silver Hand Hammer. So, we go back to Stormwind, and there, Catherine the Pure knows who owns that hammer, but refuses to talk about him in detail. We find out that this person is called Aeonis the Quiet, and he was banished from the Silver Hand for holding radical viewpoints. So, he was banished. People thought that he just kind of disappeared. What we do know about him, however, is that he loved to fish, and that leads us to our next stop, Harold Riggs, okay. the fishing trainer in Menethil Harbor, who tells us about a nice older fella named Aeonis, who would occasionally sail into town in a leaking boat for supplies and to talk shop. Good wreck, and supposedly good. he's a nice sort of guy. But the thing is, just a day before, a group, our fishing trainer says, who were dressed in red like clowns at a carnival, they rode into town asking after Aeonis. So, Riggs points us far, far off the coast of the wetlands where we find Aeonis's fishing cabin, and again, we come upon the signs of a struggle. There are dead Scarlet Crusaders on the ground. Another Crusader jumps from cover, tries to kill us, and it turns out he was told to stay and to tie up any loose ends. Now, they hold orders from the Grand Crusader, and they read as follows. The heretic known as Aeonis the Quiet is hereby condemned for the high crime of consorting with demons and the undead, forsaking the fight, larceny, and murder. The light. It goes on and on, but the point is that Aeonis... This vile creature is known to have slain no less than two of our stalwart brothers of the light while perpetrating the theft of important Scarlet Crusade property. When found, the heretic himself is to be transported to the monastery in Tears Hall for questioning and execution. Should any parcels or artifacts be in his possession when apprehended, they are to be returned to the Grand Crusader with all haste as evidence. If captured, Aeonis must be gagged, and no one save the High Inquisitor may speak with him. 
lest his insidious lies sow chaos and doubt in otherwise righteous hearts. Okay. Be wary, brothers and sisters, as there is no way of knowing what sort of vile magics Ionis may have bargained for in his fell dealings with the enemies of the light. The Order of Grand Crusader Dathlon. Ionis is supposed to be taken to Scarlet Monastery, where he will be tortured and he will be killed. Again, do remember, Grand Crusader Dathrahan, who is running this whole shindig, he is currently possessed by the Dread Lord Balnazar. So, why would the Dread Lords want to kill Aeonis? That's the question. We go back to Stormwind, having learned a lot more, and with that, Catherine is ready to give us some more detail. It turns out Aeonis was a member of the Order of the Silver Hand since the Second War, that he fought with distinction, but that leading up to the Third War, he started to express heretical opinions. He thought the Light was not a religion, but a force of nature, something that could be used for evil if the mind behind it was convinced they were right. Now, of course, at the time, that would be right. a pretty crazy <clears throat> thing to say, but very shortly after, it became obvious that he was right. Catherine admits that this was before Arthas called Stratholme, before the Scarlet Crusade began, you know, hanging people and doing all sorts of crazy, messed up things that were absolutely evil, but even in doing those evil acts, they were still able to wield the light. They had that conviction. The whole point is that it depends on the practitioner's level of belief. Yep. So, yeah, Aeonis was right. The events of Warcraft 3 and Vanilla World of Warcraft would prove him right. The Silver Hand, of course, are wrong. And by the time we talk to Catherine, all of this is completely obvious. So, with all of that being clear, they're actually ready to accept Aeonis back into their ranks. So, we gotta save him. We bust into Scarlet Monastery, and mm. we find him in High Inquisitor <clears throat> White Mane's chamber. We save him, we bring him back to Storm- They found him in High Inquisitor White Mane's chamber. Well, tell me more. Lucky, lucky. <laughs> and he takes his place in the cathedral- That is interesting. Now known as Aeonis the Vindicated. But this- Aeonis the Vindicated. They accepted that he was right even after he was alleged to have conspired with demons, undead, gone against the light. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Interesting that Aeonis also just was believed to have vanished himself when in truth he was cast out. Huh. You see where my brain's going here, Shinzai? You see what's going on here? You see this fucking shit? And you, and you see who's behind it? With the Dreadlord thing going on? Interesting. This is actually where the grand conspiracy kicks off. He asks us about the orb that we got in Alphalax, and he confirms that he was looking for something similar to that in Manorok Coven. These things are known as echoing orbs, and they're scattered... What are you fucking... You're not reading it! Fucking skipping through the fucking dialogue like that. ...in oh, Alphalax, and he confirms that he... I can't thank you enough for saving me all there. It's good to see you up and around, Aeonis. Now that we're safely back in the storm, and however, I have many questions. He was looking for something similar to that in Manorok Coven. These... And I'll give the answers in due time, however. Before I do, tell me more of this Alphalax orb you destroyed in Ashenvale. Alphalax. Tell Aeonis the full story of how you obtain and destroy the Authalax Orb. These things are known as echoing orb. This is troubling. Speaking plainly, the orb you know of as the Authalax Orb is but one of several similar artifacts known as echoing orbs. <laughs> well, I mean, if that's not a fucking, if that's not inspired by Lord of the Rings, I don't know what is. I was contacted by an old friend who asked for my help recovering one of these orbs from the Burning Blade Cult in Desolus. The Burning Blade Cult. No sooner had we located the orb and defeated the cultists carrying it, were we set upon by a band of Scarlet Crusaders. They were also looking for it, most likely. I see, please go on. Orbs, and they're scattered throughout Azeroth. In the chaos that ensued, I lost track of my friend, but when I last saw him, he had the orb and was in full retreat. He is quite resourceful, so I believe he was able to escape with it. We had made arrangements to seek passage back to the Eastern Kingdoms and rendezvous at my shack should we become separated. I made my way there and waited. My friend never arrived. Unfortunately, other uninvited guests came instead. That explains the dead crusader I found there. 
The Legion are trying to gather these and Aonis spits on the ground. Four of them came for me in the dead of night. They were whelps that wouldn't have been fit to lick the boots of any real paladin, to be sure. There was a time when four against one would have been good odds for me, but I was caught unaware and eventually overwhelmed. So who's this friend of yours, and do you have any idea where he might be? Preparation for something. Now, I think it's best to keep his name private for now, as these walls likely have ears. He has a colorful history. There are those who would mistrust him out of hand. You'll have to take me at my word when I tell you I trust this man with my life. As for his whereabouts, unfortunately, I do not know. But you can be sure that he will have gone to ground and will be well hidden. I'm confident, however, that, given some time, I should be able to locate my friend and the orb as well. Very well, then. What should our next steps be? He did say uninvited guests. Yes. Yeah. The unseen, the un uninvited. Force is unseen. Yeah. He, he actually said that. A hidden paladin? Yeah. Remember, at this point in history, it's... For me, I'll be searching for my friend and trying to learn as much as I can about these orbs and why the Scarlet Crusade wants them. For you, carry on with your adventures. Train and grow stronger in the light. I have a feeling that I'll need that strength for whatever comes next. Be ready and I will call on you when the time is right. Thank you again. I owe you a considerable debt. Three, it's Vanilla WoW, and we do not know what is coming. Obviously, now we know that in just a few years, the Dark Portal would open, the Burning Crusade expansion would begin. So who knows what the Dreadlords are preparing for, but it's likely that and what they're doing, well, it's got something to do with these orbs. As for Aeonis, well, he needs a little bit of a rest, but then he says he'll be right back in their trail. But first, he needs to find his accomplice. And this is where it's interesting because someone has been helping him. Now, Aeonis wants to keep the name to himself because it's somebody who has a colorful history. We can only guess, but if we're talking about another paladin with a colorful history, one who was banished and lived as a hermit for many years before finally being vindicated for his views, we can only think of one person, Tyrion Forgering, who currently is hanging out in the Eastern Plaguelands. Doesn't Tyrion also wield a hammer? Doesn't he have like a big two-handed hammer? Which is... Yeah. Weren't they, wasn't there, wasn't, didn't we read dialogue about how they get their heads smashed by a fucking hammer or something like that? And that does mean we could actually hear be getting a snapshot of what Tyrion was up to in those years of isolation. Interesting. That perhaps him and Aeonis the Vindicated were waging a secret war with the Dreadlords, which is just really cool. Okay, with that said, that cool. it's time to round up a number of other very interesting stories. Every class has requisition stuff that begins at a campsite in Desolus. Now, this campsite is rough. It's a massacre of humans and dwarves. Getting on the trail, we investigate the horde, leading us to bandits in Booty Bay who work for a night elf called a Larry Duskfeather. And it turns out that she has actually been brutally murdering members of the Alliance because she thinks that her people joining the Alliance was actually a very bad thing. Oh. If you're not aware of the lore, the Night Elves have been isolationists for thousands of years, and as far as they were concerned, all their troubles started when humans and orcs showed up. Now, we have to put her down, but if you're a Night Elf, you do get a unique, peaceful outcome to this quest where Alari tells you why she hates the Alliance. Okay, let's move to our next story. Before Medivh went totally mad, merchants from around Stormwind would sell him magical artifacts. A group of seven sold him fake items, and Medivh cursed them to eternally hunt the world for magical items to bring back to Medivh. Now, these guys became the Black Riders of Karazhan. One day, the magical vaults of Dalaran were raided, and seven artifacts were taken. Dalaran scryers saw images of seven dark figures. And these are just like the dark riders from Lord of the Rings. It's pretty sick. They work for a for a bad dude, they go and find magical artifacts for him. They hunt they hunt shit down. It's pretty cool. But this should have been impossible. Dalaran was at this time under a big energy shield. Very confusing. Anyway, we the players gather these seven artifacts, but the thing here that is very significant is this is the 
first appearance, the earliest canonical appearance of the Dark Riders in World of Warcraft, which is just cool. And the dev team have described a lot of these things that they're doing, like the new lore as essentially being found photos, sorts of things that canonically did happen in the past, but we're only really uh, sort of finding them or playing them now. I think when done tastefully like this, it's a really fantastic addition. I'm confused. He sounds like he doesn't... I know that we, we talked about this earlier, but it sounds like he doesn't know that the Dark Riders were in Legion. Of the Dark Riders in World 7 artifacts, but the thing here that is very significant is this is the first appearance, the earliest canonical appearance. The earliest canonical appearance. So he... Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go ahead and give it to him and say, okay, he knows about them in Legion. First, the earliest canonical appearance, which he's correct. That's correct. So, yeah, I mean, that's a correct statement. Of the Dark Rider. Off on a technicality? Well, he's speaking in, a, in, a, in technicality. Like, he, you know, he's not wrong. This is the first time that they, timeline-wise, this would be the first time that we would ever see them. Early, this early, you know? Anyway. He's right writers in World of Warcraft, which is just cool. And the dev team have described a lot of these things that they're doing, like the new lore as essentially being found photos, sorts of things that canonically did happen in the past, but we're only really uh, sort of finding them or playing them now. Right. I think when done tastefully like this, it's a really fantastic addition. There are a few other really neat things as an example in Scarlet Monastery. There's a item that drops, right? It's this silver hand training hammer, and it's a hammer that fell in battle alongside its wielder against the Orcish Hordes in Theramore. So getting the hammer, people have been walking all over Theramore trying to find some sort of like new interaction that, you know, could, could be unlocked for the wielder of the hammer. That seemingly hasn't happened yet, though. Another example is there's this ancestral sword that references Kairos, which is a settlement that had only ever been referenced in Warcraft 2, which is just neat, wow. right? Them going back That's to all of awesome. this really old stuff. And um, yeah, That's really there's, cool. there's also loads of new lore that just... It was kind of too straight and simple to fit into this video. Things like why the Zandalari are in Stranglethorn or why King Mechatork went mad in the first place. It's all really cool. Phase two isn't finished. It likely still has more to reveal. And to be honest, I think it's a confirmation that a lot of this lore being put into the season of Discovery, that some of it's maybe more radical than we thought, or the very yeah, least, it kind of seems like it gives us far more to chew on. Kind of seems like it. Really love. Yeah, that's it, a great. It thing. Actually, does feel like they're expanding the lore, and because it's not data mined and it's all found out via people just playing the game. It just feels completely natural. I think this is a humongous success, and I hope you enjoyed today's video going through some of the new stories that we've been able to experience. Hell yeah. Okay. It's a good that's video. It for me today, of course. Really I'll brought light to some of the stuff Thank that you I for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. Otherwise don't have See access you. to. Because I don't I haven't played SOD. That's pretty cool. Good video.